It's time to believe again in the potential of private enterprise, set free from the shackles of overbearing federal government. That, of course, was Texas Governor Rick Perry announcing his presidential candidacy earlier this month and pushing his particular brand of small government conservatism, the kind that wants to free us all from the shackles of federal government. Shackles like, say, Social Security and Medicare. Governor Perry makes it very clear in his new book, Fed Up, that he thinks programs like Social Security and Medicare are unconstitutional. He even, see, he wrote it all in capital letters, just like those super serious internet commentators. So you know he means business. He wants the government to be so small that it doesn't provide a social safety net, that it doesn't support you when you grow old and retire and need health care. That's big government, and he wants to set us free from those shackles. He's also been helping free Texans from governmental shackles by way of thousands of public school teachers who are losing their jobs this fall under Governor Perry and Texas Republican small government budget cutting. You know, the shackles of a paycheck and a productive work life that contributes to society. So Rick Perry's version of small government conservatism means government so small it's not there to help you. It's not there as a social safety net when you need it. It might not be there to make sure your child is getting a good education. Rick Perry is so steadfast in his belief in small government, he seems to believe that government shouldn't be there for you at all. It should just back off. Because freedom, according to Rick Perry, is more important. I'll work every day to try to make Washington, D.C. as inconsequential in your life as I can. Rick Perry wants to make the government so small you don't even notice it. You don't even know it's there. Government? <laughs> what government? I don't see any government. It's so small. Unless you're a lady. In which case, Rick Perry wants to make government so big that it can control the pregnancy of any given woman in Texas. On nearly every other issue, Rick Perry wants government to be practically non-existent. He wants government to be nowhere near you as a citizen, not even if you want it or need it. But on this one issue, on the issue of abortion, he wants government to be right there with you, handing your doctor a script, whispering in your ear that you should be ashamed of yourself. Rick Perry wants to get all up in your uterus and take a picture. We have actively worked against that Roe versus Wade decision. And today I am pleased to announce I'm designating the sauna ground bill an emergency item for the 82nd <laughs> legislative session. Back in January, Governor Perry put the mandatory sonogram bill on an emergency list to help it along in the state legislature. And the bill requires women seeking abortions in Texas to get a sonogram at least 24 hours before an abortion. Actually, why don't I let the author and one of the co-authors of the bill explain it to you? That's true. We're, so, uh, we're, I'm a country boy. That, so. That's kind of how it works. So if there's any medical professionals out there, they may get kind of hung up on some of our terminology before we're through. Well, we, we'll get through it. That's we, right. We'll, we'll, we'll get through it. Explain to us what the sonogram bill does. Basically what this bill is, it's not so much about abortions or sonograms, but it's about the woman being fully informed. So it's just it's a, it's a procedure that will inform the, the lady, the it's, girl, whoever. It's, but what this bill does would require that the sonogram be presented to the woman, she have at least 24 hours to go home, think about it, pray about it, make sure she's what she's doing. That creepy piece of video there, the bill doesn't just require a 24-hour waiting period between the mandatory sonogram and the procedure. It also requires doctors to describe the fetus to the woman, to make sure she can hear the heartbeat if there is one. The Center for Reproductive Rights sued over Rick Perry's new I want to get all up in your uterus law, saying the law intrudes on the practice of medicine, forces physicians to deliver ideological speech to patients, and treats women as less than fully competent competent adults. That new law was set to take effect on Thursday, but today a federal judge blocked enforcement of key parts of it as the lawsuit goes forward, ruling that requiring a doctor to show women pictures from a sonogram and sounds from a fetal heartbeat violates the doctor's First Amendment rights. If Rick Perry wants his Texas state government with a view of every uterus in Texas, he's going to have to fight for it. Here to talk with me a bit about this is Kelly Hart, Director of Public Affairs at Planned Parenthood of North Texas. Kelly, thanks for joining me tonight. Thank you for inviting me. 
This injunction, this ruling against the Texas sonogram law, it just came down today. Can you tell me anything about how it might affect your operations there in Texas? Well, as you said, it just came down late this afternoon, and we really haven't had the opportunity to look at it in detail. I can say that we are pleased that the more onerous parts of the bill have been enjoined, um, but we are displeased. Um, we're disappointed that women are still going to have to make an unnecessary trip to our health center in order to receive the care that they need. Yeah, tell me a little bit about that. Uh, help us to understand, what does this sonogram law actually mean for women in practical terms who are seeking medical care in your facility? In practical terms, it means that they're going to be subject to unnecessary medical requirements to receive a safe constitutional legal procedure. Um, Today, if, if a woman wants an abortion, she thinks about it, she makes her decision, she calls us for an appointment, she has to wait 24 hours from making that appointment to come to a health center to receive an abortion. As a result of this law, she's now going to have to come to the health center to receive the sonogram and whatever information the government deems necessary in addition to the medical work that we will do. And then she has to wait another 24 hours and make an unnecessary trip before she can actually have the procedure. Um, when you consider that 60% of women in the state of Texas already have a child at home, that's just that much more work for a woman who wants to have an abortion. She's going to have to get off work two days in a row. She's going to have to arrange for child care most likely two days in a row. If she's coming from less than 100 miles away, she maybe has to figure out where she's going to stay for the night. And that's just going to add to the cost of the procedure for her and to the logistics of it. It's just a way to demean and shame I, I women. No, I'm sorry. I, I didn't mean to interrupt you, Eric, because I really appreciate where you were going there on this question of, of demeaning and shaming, because I wanted to ask you, what, is, what are the assumptions about women and about women who are seeking termination services that are assumed by a law like this, assumed by these ladies or these girls, as we heard, um, needing to hear this kind of forced narrated sonogram? Well, there's the assumption that women don't know what it means to be pregnant. There's the assumption that they haven't thought about the decision, perhaps to talk to other medical professionals before they've made the call to make an appointment with us. There's also an assumption that all women who are seeking an abortion are alone, young, without children already, that they don't know what it means to be pregnant. And that's just demeaning, and it's insulting to women to think that they haven't thought about this and that they don't know what's going on inside them until, you know, some legislator makes them be told whether they want to know all the little details or not. Indeed. Kelly Hart, Director of Public Affairs for Planned Parenthood of North Texas, thank you so much for joining us tonight and, and uh, keep up the good work in Texas. Thank, thank you so much, Melissa.